Hello, welcome to the Real Estate Regroup Show. I am LJ Walker, a real estate investor helping you realize your dream of owning a home or investing in one. Today's show, I'm going to talk to you about Vermont. Yes, as many of you know, Vermont is offering $10,000 to people to move to their state, particularly those who agree to work from home. You may also know that they have legalized marijuana. You can grow marijuana there without a license. In addition, Vermont has great ski resorts. It's also becoming very popular for people who are leaf peepers and foodies because when it comes to restaurants, it's really hard to find a bad restaurant up there. They do have, I believe it's the New England School of Culinary Arts. So that probably is one, one of the reasons why. Uh, the other thing is when it comes to unemployment, they have the fourth lowest unemployment in the country. Crime, their crime rates are rather low. Most of the crime, I you know, I spoke to a few people there. Most of the crime is when people from other states pass through. Hate to say it, but it's true. Other crime that's in state is contractors who do not fulfill their promises or fulfill their contracts. And then you have the realtor scams. And let me just go into that a little bit so that you understand. Vermont has a lot of homes that are historical. Many of them are actually part of the Underground Railroad. But there are some that are just old, have no historical value, and are not part of the Underground Railroad. But these realtors will tell you they are so that they can make more money off of you. That's why you need to check with the historical society or register registry of that particular city in Vermont that you're interested in, in case anyone is, before you buy a home there. And I would say do that um, with no matter where you go, no matter um, what state you decide to choose, whether it's Vermont or another state. Now, here are the negatives, the other negatives um, regarding the state of Vermont. One, it has the smallest population in the United States of America. There are more people who die there than there are people who are born there. Their economy is rather stagnant. It sort of just stays at one place. There's really not too many corporate headquarters there. I mean, you do have Ben and Jerry's, you have Cabot Cheese, you have King Arthur Flower, uh, Teddy Bear Company. Those are really it. But the income, the amount of money that they make compared to the rest of the United States is, is low. But they are one of the highest employers in the state. You also have breweries there, many breweries there. And Vermont is known for their beer. And then the other employers uh, that are there would be the government, uh, the hospital, particularly the one in Burlington, and the colleges. So that's pretty much all you have. Now, what I have noticed, though, is that most of the people who live in Vermont are self-sustainers. They live off the land because most of it is actually country. And when I went to several businesses, I found that most of the people actually lived in upstate New York and came over on the ferry to work in Vermont. They weren't people who actually lived in Vermont, who actually worked in Vermont. That number is actually a lot smaller than you may think. Speaking of which, let's talk about transportation. Transportation over there is horrendous. You do have the ferries that go between New York and Vermont. And the ferries are, I guess you could say they're fairly decent. 
you do have buses buses in burlington run rather well and i believe newport we saw a number of buses but when it comes to when you go further out into the country or into some of the resort towns like stowe buses are horrible we were walking for about one mile one way one mile back and we did not see one bus like that's how bad it is when it comes to taxi taxis are there in burlington but not it's not like new york city at all and primarily you would have to depend on lyft and uber but when you go out to let's say stowe vermont that's going to be an issue especially if it's not a high tourist season we were trying to go to the airport and i tried to book on lyft on the phone and it took over an hour and they just kept reducing the price because they couldn't find anybody to take me to the airport it was ridiculous the resort had to you know she called a number of friends the lady at the receptionist she called a number of her friends and one of them answered and he agreed to take us to the airport that's how we got there so it was a good thing that i put i made the flight at night or it was real well, 7 30 7 30 at night late evening um as opposed to having it in the afternoon because if it was in the afternoon i would be messed up i would have missed my plane so uh, be very careful when you select which city you're going to live in these are some of the things that you i need for you to sort of get down in your head now as far as shuttles are concerned there are shuttles in resort towns but the shuttles only run during high peak tourist season even though the fall is drawing a lot of people into Stowe Vermont particularly for some reason a lot of the businesses still don't realize this and they they still operate or in the mode of well we're only going to really operate in the winter in the snow when the ski skiers come in so that's another thing next and this is a thing that affected me very badly wi-fi and 4g is completely horrendous it is slow it is inconsistent and sometimes it's actually not ex non-existent especially when you are in the mountains oh my god it was hell for me let me tell you um they had a fair and I went to the fair and I wanted to pull up something. I, I don't remember what it is that I was looking up, but I wanted to look up something and I couldn't, it was just so slow. And I was like, well, you know, what's going on here? What, what's, what's up? They said that, well, there was too many people at the fair. Now, listen, I'm from Manhattan and I can pull up the internet here without a problem. Trust me when I tell you there are more people when there is no fair in Manhattan than there was at that fair in Stowe, Vermont. And it was just, it was just so incredibly slow. This is why I don't even understand why they talk about they want people to come up there to work from home. Because how can you do that? How can you say that when both your Wi-Fi and your 4G is, is terrible? Now I understand 5G is gonna come out but I'm I'm just I'm just not sure. I know 5G is going to be faster, but I'm not sure with the way the infrastructure is out there, particularly in the mountainous areas. I, I'm I'm not sure how well it's going to do. To be quite honest with you, the other thing that happened is we lost power. There was no electricity for six hours up there. Oh, my God. Again, if people are going to work from home, if those are the people that you're attracting, that you want them to come to Vermont, you have to get that together. The government of Vermont, I hope you are listening to this podcast. I hope you are watching my YouTube video because that definitely needs to be corrected i love your state it's beautiful 
But those things right there are crippling your state. You got to get that infrastructure together. And that was one of the things that many of the people who live there did complain about. But here's the here's another thing that many people complained about, the taxes. They said that they are extremely high. Now, they're not as high as New York, New Jersey, California, or Texas, but they they would probably be number 5, I guess, on that list as far as paying high taxes. And that is causing a lot of people to leave the state. So, believe it or not, with all of this <laughs> that's going on up there, there is gentrification. Yes. And many people see it and know it. Now, the average income for a Vermonter is $45,000. Make no mistake, though, there are some rich people, particularly who live in Stowe. I did see some celebrity homes, if you will. And many of the shabbiest homes in Stowe actually go for $500,000 minimum. Minimum. You have some that are actually a billion dollars. What is the government doing about affordable housing? Nothing. There are are no affordable housing no new ones being built many people who are making the forty five thousand dollars don't even live in the city they many move to the suburbs and now they can't afford the suburbs so that they are moving even further out into the country which is still a problem because gas they have to put more gas in the car so that they can actually get to work so, yeah, unfortunately, this is what's going on. Now, as far as investing in Vermont for myself, here's my opinion, okay? If I knew more about land investing, then I would consider it. Or if... I was there a little bit longer and met people who were into medical marijuana and wanted to use the land to grow that, I probably would consider it. If I knew more people who were investing in satellite towers and buying land to set up those towers or dairy farming, I would consider it. But because I don't know enough about those things, I personally will pass. Now, please don't let the fact that I am limited in knowledge when it comes to doing that discourage you. If you still want to move out there, if you still want to invest out there, please feel free. Go ahead and do so in power. But... I will say this to you, you need to have a good plan, you need to have a good strategy going into it, and you need to have, of course, your exit strategy coming out of it. Well, folks, that's all I have for you tonight. Hopefully, the information will help you make smart financial moves. Remember, feel free to pass this along because each one reach one each one, teach one, reach one. Bye for now. Until next time, have a good night.